last couple of classes we consider how to make precise uh, precisely controlled uh, gains that is to have an output voltage which is a precise number k times the input voltage using negative feedback okay and what we saw was we need a mechanism of uh, detecting the error between the actual output and the desired output or some scaled version okay essentially the error is such that the definition of error is such that if the error goes to zero you get the function that you want okay so this is how you design any negative feedback system and you could even design non linear functions so if somehow you define the error and you drive uh, this negative feedback loop such that the error goes to zero and when the error goes to zero the definition of error should be such that you get the input output relationship in our case the relationship is quite simple it's simply that v not is k times vi so to do this we compare vi and v not by k and the important thing is as long as the error is not zero you keep on driving the output in the appropriate direction okay this is very obvious from the analogy that we have considered like driving and so on as long as you are not at the right speed you will be either accelerating or uh, braking so that you get driven uh, you go towards the correct speed and we saw that a block that will do that is an integrator so an integrator is basically something that changes its output as long as the input is not zero right it will stop only when the input is zero so clearly in this case for constant inputs this is important we will consider the case of uh, time varying inputs later so for constant inputs at steady state v not is k times okay so this is our negative feedback amplifier okay and also in steady state again for constant inputs or in other words we are lo looking only at dc inputs the error ve is zero okay any questions about this so this is the basic negative feedback amplifier now we have to implement this again uh, because we are not looking at the component level we have to implement this using control sources the main difference is this whole thing here realizes v not equals k times vi what does this number k depend on which components does it depend on here huh the resistors okay so it's actually the resistor ratio i put k there but in general if this is r1 and this is r2 what's the value of k what's that yeah so k is basically 1 plus r1 by r2 okay actually usually this is called r2 and r1 so it's 1 plus r2 by r1 okay so that gain of this amplifier depends only on the ratio of resistors and that it turns out can be fixed much more precisely than any semiconductor parameter okay so the reason i emphasize that is because inside this we have also control sources again the question comes up if you have control sources why are you going to try and make like more control sources with it but the idea is later we'll see we will look at the sensitivity to different numbers the control sources that are inside they can be poorly controlled their uh, proportionality constants can vary all over the place but the point is i mean if this is designed correctly this ratio v not is something times vi this should vary substantially okay so we'll see this is okay that's the idea so inside this also of course we'll have control sources they are more primitive control sources so this proportionality constants can vary everywhere okay now we can see that 
So yesterday we came up with uh, some realization of the integrator. How did we make the integrator? Yeah, so essentially we know that a capacitor integrates a current. So we convert the error voltage to a current and then push it into a capacitor so that we get the integral. I will show it like this. The error voltage is simply the difference between this and that, right. So, I will make that the controlling voltage for a voltage controlled current source whose proportionally constant is Gm and there is some C and we also use the voltage controlled voltage source if I call this VO1, this is VO1. Now, this uh, entire thing is equivalent to taking the difference and integrating it. What is the value of omega u? This proportionality constant. Hmm? Yeah, gm by c. Now, here itself we can see, I mean inside this we have this control sources, okay. Let us again consider a DC input that is a constant input, maybe 1 volt or so and let us say k is 4 just for the sake of argument. What is the steady state value of the output? Initially it can be different. What can be different here for instance the capacitor voltage when you start off can be some arbitrary value that does not give you 4 volts at the output, but like as we saw yesterday it will get either charged or discharged until the output becomes 4 volts, okay. So, the in steady state this is 4 volts. Now, let us say the value of this gm goes up by 50 percent, what happens to the steady state output? So, let us say gm becomes 1.5 gm, what happens to the steady state output? same okay and similarly this one instead of giving you v o 1 it gives you 2 times v o 1 what happens to the steady state let us not worry about how it gets there but to the steady state. So, in this control source right the second voltage control uh, voltage source instead of giving you this voltage between here and ground it gives you 2 times that voltage. So, what happens to the steady state? Huh? It will change. Why not? Finally, I mean the steady state condition is the same. That is, what is the steady state condition? How do you evaluate the steady state? When the capacitor current is 0, right? I mean, this is how you did it for all the other first order circuits, isn't it? So, if the capacitor current is not 0, that means its voltage is changing. So, if you are looking at DC quantities, DC steady state, in steady state the capacitor currents will be 0. So, the capacitor current is 0 that means V e is 0 and V out is 4 volts, okay. This is fine. So, you can already see that this circuit is not sensitive to the exact values of internal current sources, okay. How it gets to the steady state is perhaps sensitive, but let us say we are not currently worried about it. We are only worried about the steady state value that uh, the value exact value of the internal current sources they do not matter this is okay. So, we kind of already uh, achieved what we wanted that is we take some uh, control sources whose parameters vary substantially and using them we have got another control source V naught equals k v i whose proportionality constant does not depend on the I mean does not change much okay does not change at all. We will analyze this more quantitatively is this understood? So, in any negative feedback system you will have some error you define it goes to 0. So, that means that you make the error to be the input of some integrator. So, that the integrator keeps driving the output until the error goes to 0, okay. So, the essential feed, uh, feature of a negative feedback system is that you will have a closed loop that is 
something has to some information has to come back from the output to the input that is feedback. If you do not have that it is open loop that is you simply adjust the output and hope that it is the right one ok. This is fine ok. So, now uh, to take the discussion further let us uh, we need to uh, know a little bit more about uh, control sources ok. So, we have this uh, these four types of uh, control sources right. I will show the controlling side as well. And this is the control side. So, let us say it is A times V i that is developed between these two ok. And similarly, we have voltage controlled current source where there is I mean the meaning of this drawing these two terminals is that there are some two terminals in the circuit between which there is a voltage and that voltage will control this control ok. Let us consider these two for now. Are you familiar with two ports? You are right. Okay. Now, you can think of uh, we would not go into the two port parameters of this. We can think of uh, these two as the two ports of the control source. Okay. Now, what is the are you familiar with uh, definitions of input resistance and output resistance and so on? Have you heard of these terms? Yeah, where? Two port networks, ok. So, essentially if you have a two port network, you connect something here. So, I will show it like this and you may connect a source on this side it could be in general an impedance. I mean you think of one of the ports as the input and the resistance looking into that or the impedance looking into that is the input impedance and you think of the other port as the output. This is a matter of definition ok. So, you can make a circuit and you can call something the input and something the output. So, the resistance looking into the input terminals that is the input resistance and the resistance looking into the output terminals that is the output resistance ok. I mean general the input resistance does it depend on R Z s or R s? It does not obviously that is outside the circuit, but it can depend on Z l and similarly the output resistance Z out does not depend on Z l. In fact, you remove Z l and evaluate the rest of the circuit, but that can depend on Z s ok. Anyway, we do not even need to go into that kind of uh, detail here. What is the input resistance of a voltage controlled voltage source? Hmm? What is the input resistance? I mean if I think of the controlling port as the input, what is the input resistance? Ashwith. Who is Ashwith? You are? Yeah, what is the input resistance? I mean, just now a few seconds back, all of you said you knew what input resistance is. What is the resistance? If I give you a black box, it has two terminals, and how will you measure the resistance between two terminals? Yeah, so I mean, you know the procedure, right? If I give you a box and it has two terminals ok and I ask you what is the resistance between these two terminals, how will you go about measuring it? Exactly, so you apply a voltage, V test, find the current that flows and the ratio of the two is uh, the resistance and alternatively you could apply a current 
and then find the voltage that is developed. Either way, you should obviously get the same answer. So, what is it here? Advaita Sridhar, what is the value of Ri? Infinity, obviously. How much current will flow if you apply a voltage there? Ah, so, that is all. So, because this is an open circuit, if you apply a voltage here, how much current will flow? 0. So, clearly the input resistance is input resistance of a voltage controlled voltage source is infinite. Okay. What about the output resistance? Now, when evaluating the output resistance, you have to set VI to 0. Okay. I mean, that is how you do it, right? Two port parameters. How do you find Z22? Do you know what Z22 is? How do you find Z22? What is that? Louder, please. I10. Okay. So, the parameters are defined with some uh, assuming that some two quantities are independent variables and some others are dependent variables. In case of uh, Z parameters, you say that the voltage of the second port is proportional to the current in the first port and some other constant times the current in the second port. So, if you want to find Z22, you have to first set I12 to 0. Once you set I 1 to 0, Z 2 2 is nothing but the resistance or the impedance looking into the second pole. Okay. So, in this case R out is what? Anand P s, what is it? No, you have to be a little louder, I cannot hear what you are saying. 0. Why? Yeah, obviously, if you set VI to be 0, you have a 0 voltage source which is a short circuit. Now, you have to be a little careful. So, like I said, you can either apply a voltage and find the current or apply a current and find the voltage. If it is indeed a short circuit, you cannot apply a voltage, but if you apply a current, you see that for any current that you apply, you will have 0 volts across it. Is this part okay? I mean, if it is not okay, let me know. There is no point in uh, saying that you know something when you do not, because after that it is going to come back and bite you anyway. If you set VI to 0, you will have the control source with 0 volts. Now, this is a sort of pathological condition. We cannot apply V test here. This does not make any sense, because this does uh, itself violates Kirchhoff's voltage law. But it is quite easy to see. I mean, this whole thing, whatever I am describing looks over elaborate for some silly circuit like this, but there are some more complicated circuits also where this can happen. So, you have to be aware of all these possibilities. You apply a current, I mean, this is 0 volts after all. So, whatever current you apply, it is 0. So, this is sorry, not 0 volts, 0. Okay. Is fine. So, then quickly what is the input resistance of the voltage controlled current source? Akhil infinity, yeah, it is the same, and the output resistance. output resistance? Agni Raj. Yeah. What is the output resistance? Infinity. Why? Exactly. So, if the input being 0, the current will be 0. So, it becomes an open circuit. So, this is also infinity. Okay. And we can also
do the same for a current control voltage source where again you have a voltage source and what does the voltage depend on some branch current i i and i will show that branch here okay so what it means is i mean in a circuit you can have some element through which a certain i i is flowing and this voltage will be proportional to that okay and a current controlled current source is similar except that you have a times i i so vishwa chaitanya where are you yeah what is the input resistance of the current controlled voltage source So whatever you say, say it loudly because I can't even hear infinity. Why? Which of which circuit is open? No, between one and one prime. What resistance do you see? Hmm. Sandeep. What resistance do you see between one and one prime? What is it? Zero. Obviously, I mean, you just have a wire, right? So it is a short circuit. So this is zero. And the output resistance also zero because again, if you set I I to zero, you have a zero volt voltage source or a short circuit. So that is zero. and a current control current source what are the values i mean zero and infinity okay so do these things make sense what pattern do you see for the input resistance huh so if it's a voltage control source whatever kind of source it is what is the input resistance infinity so what is the significance of this so if it's a voltage controlled source the input resistance is infinity so why is it like that i mean what's the significance of this what is that it's an open circuit so what does it mean so these are ideal uh, sources right so let's say you have some circuit it doesn't matter what it is and you have some two nodes okay now you want to sense the voltage between these two nodes okay so you use some kind of uh, voltage controlled source maybe a voltage control voltage source or a current source what by this what i mean is you can think of this as being connected there okay so if the input resistance is infinity what happens when you connect it nothing right that's the idea so the input resistance has to be infinity so that this business of sensing a voltage or using some voltage to control something else it doesn't affect the voltage itself okay so you have some circuit and it has some voltage and you have to use that voltage to control something so let's say you connect some circuit to it then that voltage changes then of course that may not be what you want right you have to sense the voltage that is there so ideally if you want to sense a voltage you should do so with an infinite resistance that is you shouldn't draw any current while sensing a voltage that is you should load the circuit okay that's the idea is this fine
this is what it means r i is infinity ideally this so this means that doesn't load the circuit to which the input is connected okay now similarly a current control source what is the input resistance zero so again what's the significance of it in light of what we discussed just now exactly so you have some branch okay between nodes 1 and 1 prime and you want to sense the current that is flowing through it so how would you do it so let's say this is a current control voltage source and this by itself has ri of 0 that means there is just a wire so how will you sense this current the current flowing through that branch so essentially you have to break this wire and hook this up in series right so that's the only way you can find the current through anything a current is a through variable right so you have to break that branch and see what is going through it's like measuring let's say water flowing through a pipe you have to cut the pipe and measure what is flowing through the cross section but obviously if whatever you connect to make the measurement it obstructs the flow of water you will be measuring something different from what you originally intended right so this is exactly the same way i mean same thing so you connect a, i can say you connect this branch in series with this branch but of course this branch is a short circuit so the original branch has a change if this branch had some resistance now you have a different circuit altogether now whether that changes significantly or not that is something to be evaluated but it will change it okay so to sense a current without changing you need a short circuit something that doesn't obstruct the flow of current in the first place obviously right so again a short circuit doesn't load when you sense a current doesn't load the circuit so if you have a current control source RIS zero ideally. That's fine. <coughs> Now, what about the output resistances? What pattern do you see here? voltage source has zero output resistance i mean this is i think more obvious and more relatable to just an independent voltage source are you familiar with the concept of the resistance of a voltage source what is the thevenin resistance of a voltage source zero right zero okay and what's the thevenin resistance of a current source infinity so that is if you set the voltage to zero you get a short circuit if you set the current to zero you get an open circuit and exactly the same thing happens here whether it's an independent source or a controlled source uh, an independent voltage source and a controlled voltage source both have zero output resistance an independent current source and a controlled current source both have infinite output resistance okay so what's the significance of this a voltage source has zero output resistance so what does it mean what that's right so what does it mean when you use it in a circuit exactly so clearly you have a voltage source so that you can connect something to it right that's the whole idea so when you connect something to it the voltage shouldn't change after all it's called an independent voltage source right it shouldn't change so it shouldn't uh, change depend on uh, what is connected to it if the output resistance is zero clearly it will not change regardless of what you connect to that okay and similarly you have an independent uh, current source regardless of what you connect the current going there will be i not okay this is fine so it's same for control sources as well basically 
when you connect these things into the circuit it shouldn't change that's the idea okay things shouldn't change now of course we know this is not the reality so what is reality for a voltage source what do you actually get so there will be some resistance so that means that actually the voltage across the voltage that you see across the circuit when you connect is different from v not okay of course it's a if it's a good voltage source it shouldn't be all that different from v not so what does it mean rs should be small so rs has a, some dimensions right it's very small compared to what yeah so all these things i mean i also will say things like rs should be small and so on but this should be understood properly so there is no absolute value that is small or large 1 milli ohm can be large and 10 kilo ohms can be small in different contexts okay so rs should be small it really means rs must be much smaller than so let's say the whole thing can be represented as a load rl so then obviously the voltage across the load will be rs by rs plus sorry rl by rs plus rl times v not which is approximately v not is this okay so rs should be small meaning it entirely depends on the context in which you are using it okay what is connected to it so it's only compared to the load that you can say that rs is smaller large okay similarly what is it for a current source so you have some resistance across it you want infinity obviously you are not going to get infinity so you will have to settle for large again large is large compared to the load that you connect so this means that the current that is flowing through the load will be rs by rs plus rl times i not which is approximately i not under those conditions so again there is no absolute value of resistance that it can be defined as large or small it is entirely in comparison with the load okay any questions now so we will for control sources also in reality we will not get these okay so you will have some resistance there and some resistance here so what do you want the values of these to be what should be the value of ri infinity but we will not get infinite usually so what should it be should be very large and very large compared to you will connect some circuit here looking back there will be some resistance this resistance should be very large compared to that okay and similarly you will connect something to the output the output resistance should be very small compared to that so that this behaves like a voltage source the meaning of behaving like a voltage source means that it has some voltage when you connect a load so if you remove the load or connect the load or change the load a little bit the voltage won't change that's what it means okay so similarly i'll just write these as large and small but it's understood that it's in comparison to the resistance of whatever is connected on the respective sides okay so to sense a voltage you need a large resistance and to sense a current you need a small resistance so this part is okay the ideal and probably real characteristics of control sources so this is how we will model them again we have to do all these things because we won't go into the transistor 
So, we need to model them as control sources, we need to know what characteristics there are to be modeled in the first place ok. So, with this it is kind of complete every control source can be modeled ok. So, we do not necessarily need to go into the full two port representation this is enough. Any questions about any of this control source business? Compared to a full two port representation what is missing here I mean in this picture you have some circuit representation of two ports right I mean just think about it any one of the two ports compared to that something is missing here what is it that is missing this has gain right a Right, something is obviously missing is it? How many two port parameters do you have in any parameter set? No, no, how many two port parameters do you have? Huh? How many parameters do you have? Four. How many parameters do you see in that box? Huh? Two. Should we start learning how to count or? Three, right? So, we have this, this and that, ok. So, what is missing? which is the part that is missing yeah. No, do not worry about the exact nature of the parameter what is it that is missing here. Are you familiar with circuit equivalence of two ports, circuit representation of two port? I mean you draw these uh, voltage sources in series with resistors for z parameters and so on. No, the safe answer right. I can't question you further. What does the parameter Z12 mean? Anyway, this is an aside, this is not essential to the current discussion, but. Uh, let us say we take what these equations are saying forget that we are describing voltages here and currents as independent variables and voltages as dependent variables. What does this uh, say? It tells you how much the voltage here is affected by the current in the same port. What is this term here? That tells you if you connect something on this side on the right side to port 2 how much effect it has on port 1 ok. And if you look at this it tells you if you connect something on the left side to port 1 how much effect it has on port 2 it is control in that direction right and this one is simply if you connect uh, something here, it is because of its own current ok. So, what is missing here now? Yeah. So, basically the control is only this way right. If you apply something here, something goes there. The other day I also talked about it being unilateral ok. But if you connect something on the right side, nothing comes to the left side. So, that means that this parameter 1, 2 which tells you how much port 1 is affected by port 2 that is 0 ok. So, we have assumed completely unilateral stuff that is control goes only this way, but not that way ok. The general two port representation includes everything it can be control going in both directions ok. But anyway this is a sort of uh, aside, but you need to know and in fact another interesting thing to find out is that uh, I think you do not know right any circuit can in general be represented by any of the two port parameter sets. What two port parameter sets do you know? What kind of two port parameters? Z y then G h ok, G h Z y they are the most uh, often used ok. So, what I want you to do uh, later is you take the ideal control sources not with uh, finite values of r i and r o with 0 and infinity and see 
for each one which of the parameter sets can be legitimately used ok. You understand what I am saying? I mean you can represent any resistance by specifying its resistance or conductance is that true? It is true, but except for some pathological cases which one what is the pathological case? If you have a short circuit you cannot I mean the conductance is infinity, but it is useless you cannot use that in any calculations right. Similarly, if you have an open circuit the resistance is infinity you have to specify it if you want to calculate as having a conductance of 0. Similarly, each of these there are some two port parameters which will not be defined which will not be finite. So, you can figure out which works for which. So, let us get back to our uh, negative feedback amplifier because it is also essential for uh, today's tutorial. Okay, let me redraw this. Now we know how this works and uh, we know that for uh, DC values of the input the output will be k times the input ok. Now initially uh, like I said we will not be concerned with uh, concerned with exactly how it reaches steady state ok. We will only worry about the steady state value itself ok. So, what is the simplification I can make in that case? What simplification can I make? So, the circuit itself, if I want only the steady state value, what is it that I need to? Basically, the capacitor current has to be 0, ok. And this is exactly like what you have done in the tutorial, right. You can straightforwardly calculate the steady state for DC cases by removing the capacitor altogether, ok. So, we will be left with only the controlled source. So, in the ideal case what is the value of uh, V? 0 right. So, this is 0. So, this is an interesting thing we will come back to later when we define op amps. So, essentially the voltage between these two it is 0 always right in steady state, but the point is I mean one way to get 0 volts between two nodes is you short the two nodes, but these two are not shorted together ok. So, they just have a 0 voltage across them because of negative feedback. Okay. So, such a thing is known as a virtual short and it is very important, but it is also important to remember that it happens because of negative feedback ok. So, that concept also uh, makes it very easy to analyze circuits that have negative feedback with what are known as operational amplifiers or op amps. Now, we just discussed control sources ok and we said I mean this is a voltage controlled current source, now it is not going to be a perfect current source. So, what else will it have? It will have what? large parallel resistance exactly. So, the output resistance of this will not be infinity, but it will have some value or not ok. The input resistance I will still take as infinity and it turns out that with certain types of transistors this is actually possible that you can have nearly infinite input resistance. So, I leave it as it is and I will consider only this part G m times R o ok. Now, the basically I am doing all this because initially we would not worry about transients and how the output gets there and so on. We will only worry about uh, the DC steady state and we will make a simplified model. 
Now tell me between this error voltage VE and the output voltage V0. Okay. Give me a simplified model. That is, I have removed the capacitor altogether. Okay, and I have uh, what I want is a simple model between this error voltage VE and the output voltage V0. So tell me what element I can use to model the relationship between them. You understand the question? Tell me a simpler circuit I can use inside the box. Okay, the inside the box I do not have that complicated a circuit. I have two control sources and a resistor, but I would like it even simpler than that. What is the simplest thing I can use? Huh? VCVS with what value? Voltage control, voltage source. What is the proportionality constant of that? Huh? What is the value of the gain? That's it. What is K, man? I don't want it between VI and V naught. I want the equivalent of what is inside this box. Okay. What is it? JMR naught. Okay. Because if I have VE here, what's the voltage across this? V times GM flows there. So the voltage across this is GM times R naught, and this is just transferring that voltage. So, that is also G m times R naught times V e. Okay. So, the whole thing can be replaced by a single voltage control voltage source whose value is G m times R naught times V e. And this G m referred to that uh, voltage control current source and so on and R naught was the output resistance of it. And why have two constants when we do not even have two elements to identify them with? So, we can simply call this A naught. Okay. So, this is a very simple model of uh, negative feedback amplifier using a voltage control voltage source. Now, sometimes you start off with this. In fact, in the other half of the class, if you have discussed things with any of them, probably they would start with this model where we started with an integrator and then said that in steady state it will be ideal and so on. So, instead of that you can think of it as you have V naught, you have V naught by k. Okay. So, the error voltage is V i minus V naught by k and what is this? This is a voltage control voltage source or an amplifier and what is the value of V naught? I mean, what do you guess it will be? Will it be very large or very small? What should be the ideal value of A naught? I mean, think of all the reasoning that we went through so far, right? What is the value of A naught? I mean, J m times R naught, okay? So, what is the ideal value? Infinite. Why? R naught was infinite, right? R naught was infinite. So, a naught should be infinite, but in reality it will be some finite value, but it should be large. Okay. So, one of the ways of thinking about a negative feedback amplifier is to say that, hey, I look at the error V i minus V naught by k or any other definition of error to realize some other function and instead of saying integrating, I will say amplify by a large number A naught, ideally infinity and drive the output. Is this okay? So, what this is modeling is, what this is missing is how it gets to the steady state, but it tells you the steady state directly. Okay, And this is even simpler than that. So, we can use this for initial calculations and in fact, I think the tutorial will uh, contain a lot of this. So, you can solve this right? with finite value of A naught. What do you do? First of all, this is V naught by k. So, V e, the error voltage is V i minus V naught by k. So, all you have to do is write the equation for this voltage. What is that? A naught times V i minus V naught by k is what? What is it? V naught. So, from this you can solve for V naught. Okay. So, we will do that and then we will also interpret it in appropriate ways that is interesting. 
but at least this will uh, if you see a model with only an amplifier uh, you should not get confused I think the tutorial has many problems like this you can make calculations and see ok. Now, if you do this uh, you will also see that V naught will be something times V i and this something will not be very sensitive to A naught that is what I have been uh, saying all along ok. That is we will have I mean we are making a control source using another control source, but the thing is this A naught can be vary by even an order of magnitude, but the ratio between V naught and V i does not vary ok or does not vary much. So, think about these things we can continue in tomorrow's class. <coughs>